This is where the fun begins. Now that I've gone over my top 10 favorite movies of 2019, it's time to talk about my top 10 most hated movies of 2019. Now even though I generally try to see everything that comes to theaters, there are a few that I didn't see that very well could have made the list. I didn't see Cats because I don't see how I could have given a thorough review on it. The CGI work is so frightening that I knew that'd be the only thing I'd be thinking about while watching the movie. So I decided to spare myself the misery and skip that one altogether. But there were still plenty of others I suffered through. Still not as many bad ones as 2017, but we still got Hellboy, Replicas, Brightburn, The Secret Life of Pets 2, Annabelle Comes Home, and Aladdin. But they're nothing compared to what's coming next. Here are my picks for the top 10 worst movies of 2019. Number 10. Kicking off the list is the most disappointing movie of the year for me, Toy Story 4. I know a few of my fellow Land Before Time fans wanted to see this make the list because of how it wasted Juliana Hansen, and that's only the 12th thing wrong with the movie. I was sorely let down when I first saw it, and it's only gotten worse the more I've thought about it. This was an utter betrayal to the characters and themes of Toy Story, treating the old supporting characters like they don't matter, making a total idiot out of Buzz, and ripping out the very core of who Woody is. It ruined the pitch-perfect send-off that Toy Story 3 gave us, and made some of the other greatest moments of the trilogy completely meaningless. I reject it as a continuation of Toy Story. As far as I'm concerned, this is still true. When it all ends, I'll have old Buzz Lightyear to keep me company. For infinity and beyond. Darn right. Number 9. A sequel that had everything to live up to. Everyone asked for it, everyone saw it. But alas, 47 meters down on Cage was exactly what we thought it'd be. Okay, I don't think anyone was expecting any screaming fish. Yeah, that's a thing in this movie. But it's a direct-to-video sequel that somehow made it to theaters that doesn't even have any connection to the first movie. It tries to create some kind of character arc that gets wrapped up in the first 10 minutes, and from there, the movie can't even produce good thrills because the sharks look like giant clay models. The only good thing that came out of this movie for me was getting one of the top comments on the trailer, referring to the movie's hashtag, Sharkbait. Sharkbait! (laughs) Number 8. Man, I hate it when the critics lie. Number 8 on my list is Booksmart, which earns the abbreviation BS. Everything about this movie was so awkward and unnatural, the humor was tired and predictable when it wasn't just plain disgusting. And while the two leads may have chemistry, they needed a far better script than jokes that make light of human trafficking or a lengthy conversation about one of them having sex with her stuffed panda. If any of that strikes you as hilarious, then this is the movie for you. Otherwise, I cannot fathom the appeal. This was Olivia Wilde's first directed film, and I pray to her father who art in heaven above it will be her last. Number 7. With a title as lazily simplistic as this, I don't care if I'm making a bad pun. I think little of this movie. It uses an uninspired premise to deliver painfully unfunny gags and borderline creepy innuendo involving grown men and the child version of the main character. And we can't sympathize with the main character because she hardly learns anything from this supernatural experience, and she's so dumb that it takes looking into a mirror for her to realize that she's turned into a kid. Never mind her sudden voice change, or the fact that she can barely reach the coffee counter. And I'd still like to know what was up with seeing the trailer once in the theater four months after the movie's release. I'm serious, that happened before Where Do You Go Bernadette. Number 6. Coming in at number 6 is The Gallows Act 2. You didn't even know this movie existed, did you? While it answers one of the lingering questions left by the first movie, the sequel makes the head-scratching decision of being shot as a regular movie, completely abandoning the found footage format of the first movie. What else? Is the next Halloween movie going to be filmed as a documentary? And despite not being from the point of view of a camcorder held by one of the actors, The Gallows Act 2 somehow looks and sounds cheaper than its predecessor. The first one wasn't good, but at least had two or three effective scenes. This is just packed with unforgivably bland characters and zero scares, making for the worst horror movie this year. Number 5. This was Disney at their most cynical, Maleficent Mistress of Evil. A movie where the story of Sleeping Beauty as we've always known it has become the legend, and that creates the conflict of the movie. 
Because with Disney these days, cranking out one lifeless remake or reimagining after another, the real problem lies with us preferring to pass on the original animated classics to the next generation. And in the context of the movie, it could all be avoided if one character just said, Hey Kingdom, you got it all wrong. Maleficent is my hero. End of movie. Combined with unpleasant visuals and abysmally stilted acting, it all amounts to only the second biggest Disney disaster this year. Dot, dot, dot. Number four. The only hustle that happened here was toward me and my wallet. Don't worry, I'm not referring to hustlers. It'd be way too big a gamble to put three critically acclaimed films on this list. I'm talking about The Hustle. Rebel Wilson and Anne Hathaway are both very comedically capable, but they're given the most unfunny script for a movie labeled as a comedy this year. It's all fat jokes with Rebel Wilson and gross-out jokes with both of them, and they go on forever. This is some of the worst pacing I've had the displeasure of experiencing. And it finishes off with one of the most memorably stupid songs ever written for a movie. The critics hated it too, so I dearly hope that this is a lesson that you can't just make a gender-swapped remake and expect it to automatically be praised. Number 3 this ain't no Firefly. Number three on the list is Serenity, a movie that did not put me in such a state as its title. It put me in a state of pure agitation. This movie is a boring and witless hodgepodge of film genres and hasn't the faintest idea what to do with any of them. The story is an incoherent jumble and that freaking plot twist in the middle. Not only is it misplaced, it's so ludicrous that it doesn't even feel real. I know a couple of reviewers saw it as a so-bad-it's-good flick, but I really couldn't see it as that. For me, it was just a kind of stupid that made my head hurt. I have no clue what the filmmakers were thinking. Now, I do know what the makers of the top two movies were thinking, and that's what makes them worse than Serenity. They know their audience, and they know that they don't need to try in order to make money, as both these movies did. So here we go. Number 2. When Twilight ended, we got Fifty Shades of Grey. When Fifty Shades of Grey ended, we inevitably got the next replacement, and that was After. Yep, first it was Twilight fanfiction, and then we got Harry Styles fanfiction. While this may not have been as painful of an experience as Fifty Shades of Grey, it is still just as tedious and just as void of life. Once again, the two leads have absolutely no chemistry, and there's nothing to either of them. The girl has no personality, and the guy is a creep that she somehow finds appealing. The only character I felt for was the completely faithful boyfriend who gets cheated on, and yet we're supposed to root against him. It's monotonous and excruciatingly painful garbage, but who cares, because we've got cheap demographics that we can make a quick buck off of. And we're getting the sequel after we collided this year, so there is automatically one slot taken on my Worst Movies of 2020 list. Number 1 So many times this year, Disney resorted to pure cash-ins. Aladdin made me roll my eyes, Toy Story 4 made me depressed, Maleficent 2 made me facepalm, but only one made me physically violent. It could not give me one good reason why I shouldn't rip it apart. The number one worst movie of 2019 is The Lion King, a creatively bankrupt remake with so much wrong with it, it resulted in my longest review I've ever done for a movie currently playing in theaters. I cannot think of another time where I saw the sheer magnitude of not caring manifest itself on screen. This movie has no soul, no passion, no purpose. It just copies every line and shot that had thought put into it in the original and expects us to get the same great feeling. That's not possible when all the charm and emotion is sucked out, when the voice acting is this wooden, Scar's delivery of Long Live the King is especially terrible, when we're asked if we can feel the love tonight when it's freaking daytime, and when the movie finds it necessary for us to know that Simba's fur was transported to Rafiki by a turd ball being rolled by a dung beetle. Which, to be fair, may be the most symbolic image in the film. It's Disney laughing at the fact that we're okay with them rolling this turd ball movie in front of our faces. Other than that, this movie does everything the same as the animated one, while simultaneously doing infinitely less. I hated watching it, I hate that it exists, and I am terrified that I live in a world that would pay $1.6 billion to allow Disney to continue beating the dead horse that is the Disney remakes, and cheer them on as they do it. 
I tell you, as the box office numbers for this thing continued to rise, I felt like Captain America and Black Widow watching the ascending number of disappearing people in the world. This is a nightmare. I've had better nightmares. This movie was not dead on arrival. It was dead before it was even thought of. The Lion King is the number one worst movie of 2019. That's a wrap. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this list. And be sure to let me know what your most hated films of 2019 were. Like and share. Subscribe for more. This is Pop Culture. I'm Alex Pop.